Okay, so Sally and I are here with you tonight. We brought a story for you. You know, there's a, a lot of uh, talk these days about the big problem that's going around, and it is a very serious problem. You might hear it called a pandemic, or you might hear people talk about COVID-19, the, the virus that's going around and making a lot of people sick. And it is a big problem for people in a lot of ways. And I know it's a problem for kids too, because you don't get to do all the things that, that you would like to do. Uh, you don't get to be with your friends the way you'd like to be. And so I thought this might be a good book for us to share. It's called, What Do You Do With a Problem? And it's written by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by Mae Beeson. What do you do with a problem? What do you do? Let's see. Oh, sorry, it's taking me so long to get to the first page. There we go, all right. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it, I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with a problem, I thought. I wanted to make it go away. I shooed it, I scowled at it, I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and worried about that. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself but it still found me. And the more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. I realized that I had to face it. So even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to learn and to grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. Every problem has an opportunity for something good you just have to look for it. So, I know that you and I probably can't fix this problem, this sickness that's going around, but we can look for opportunities, and lots of people are. So scientists and doctors and nurses and all kinds of people are using this opportunity to learn more and to study more so that they can fight this virus for us. And we can do things. We can wear wear our masks 
and wash our hands and use our hand sanitizer and we can be safely distant from people so that we can stay healthy and keep other people healthy. And then while you're staying home more, maybe you're finding opportunities to get out some toys you hadn't played with in a while, or maybe to clean out some toys that you hadn't played with in a while that you could pass on to somebody else. I bet you're finding opportunities to explore, to learn new things. I am so amazed at the ways that you're learning how to use Zoom like a lot of grown-ups have a hard time doing. You are finding opportunities, and I think as you do that, you can work your way, you can get through this problem, and you can help some of us grown-ups get through this problem too. So, I pray for you. I pray that you will be healthy and safe, and I miss you, and I just pray that God gives you good rest, and that God gives you eyes to look for all the wonderful opportunities around you. Good night. I love you.